standpoint of a sense of urgency and having patience. That was a word that I used the other day at the end of practice, that we had to have a sense of urgency. That, And, and you know, you want the season to get off to a good start, but at the same time, um, my assistants brought it up to me, we still have to be patient, understand, you know, not only, you know, you talk about everyone in the league, there's a lot of new players, but our team, I'd say we're a more a new team than a young team, and they're changing roles. Um, we got new guys. We got, you know, it's just it's just different. So um, I think it's that fine line. You know, I, I, I've blown up twice in 17 days, um, you know, just trying, at the, you know, one, to get their attention, to have a sense of urgency, but the other days you're trying to be patient, try to help them come along and learn and grow. Obviously not going to get every guy you recruit on the trail, and some of them end up in, in this conference. One of those is uh, Christian Braun, the guy that went to KU this year. What did you see on him on the recruiting trail, and, and kind of what was the, the process of that? Well, I liked his toughness. His, you know, he, he knew how to play. He was a winner. Um, you know, great high school coach, Coach Fritz, you know, done an unbelievable job with him. I think the thing, too, he grew. You know, he just kept growing and growing, and, you know, so now he gives you that versatility. He can handle the ball, and then as, you know, he can play some different positions. And in in this day and age with positionless basketball, um, you know, he could play one, you know, not all the time, but he could play one, two, three, four, and give you a lot of different looks. How weird is it as a coach when you're facing these guys that you recruit on the trail as hard? And then oh, I mean, conference. that's all the time. I mean, it's, you know, that's, you've been doing that. I've been doing that for 40 years. You, <laughs> you know, you don't get kids and you're always playing against them. And, uh, you know, I even coached some of the guys in here with USA basketball. So um, those guys, I, you know, you, you're with them for, you know, a month and you have a great relationship and a lot of hugs and smiles this morning in the hallway. So it, it's just part of it. But once the game goes up, you know, that ball goes up and you start the game, you're, you're just worried about your guys and being prepared. Which one of the uh, rule changes this year is on step backs. You can't step back and don't go one, two. You have to step back. We we will see. I, I <laughs> you know the they might have warned all the workout guys and everybody else and told James Harden so he didn't demonstrate it. So you know all our guys. I mean it'll be interesting. Uh, we sent some in last year that they did double step backs and it wasn't called and and you know now it's it's part of almost every kid's game now. And and I not that you know I'm I'll probably tell you I don't love it but it is part of their game and and you know so it'll be interesting how they call it and how close it is and you know is it a one is it one two or is it you know are they doing it with the ball without the ball so is it that'll that'll be interesting and different uh, and we'll see what happens. Are you having to like tell the guys like hey don't do that anymore? We haven't. We're going to show the video to our guys here. We are talking about it and I want to see what happens in the in the in the games also. Um, even you know this summer FIBA I, I kind of joked that our same workout guides are in Europe too because they were all doing the one two step back and um, so it's 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 part of everyone's game so it'll be interesting how close they really call it. Coach um you know, everyone else seemed to kind of get some carryover credit so far. You guys won this whole shebang last year, come in eighth. Does that kind of get a little tiring to constantly have to almost prove yourself year to year? Well, I, I just told our guys, you know, one, you know, that's up to them to feel disrespected or mad. You know, I, if I'm mad, it doesn't do it any good. And, and it doesn't really doesn't mean anything. And I, the one thing I did bring up every year, if you look back, and I, I've looked back, somebody's picked seventh, eighth, or ninth, ends up in the top. Somebody, you know, we were picked eighth the one year and ended up in the Elite Eight. So, um, you know, Texas Tech made their run. It, it's just, it's part of it. Um, you know, we, it is what it is, and we, all we can control is how we, what we do every day, and that's, all, that's the most do you think that your guys kind of embrace that underdog mentality? Well, I hope so. I hope so. And, and I was even mad last year that, you know, we weren't picked higher, you know, to be honest. We had everybody back from the Elite Eight team. And, um, and we, you know, even with all the injuries and missing guys, we still won the league. So, you know, we had that opportunity. And we'll have a, we'll have a lot of opportunities to prove ourselves. And I'm just worried about uh, beating Emporia State on Friday night right now. What are your thoughts of, ba <clears throat> of basketball becoming more of less of a physical game and more of a fluid and skilled game? Well, I think that's what the NBA has tried to do, and, and I think they've done a pretty good job with it. Uh, although you watch 
the playoff games and it's it's you know this the they set ball screens and they're it's like a lineman in the football game leading with his arms and getting them twice and displacing guys so uh, i you know it it I think it's it's part of the game. It's fine. They've, I think we've done a good job of getting rid of the hand checking, especially out on the court. Uh, you know, and but yet we still probably allow a lot of physical contact in the lane, and that's so hard to call. And and you always hear the oh the fans <laughs> yelling, and they, they just bumped them. Who's you know who, who created contact? I was watching an NBA game last night. Somebody drove and knocked somebody down, and you know it's hard. Those are hard calls, and. We got such good athletes. We got, you know, the games are so intense. Um, it makes it very, very difficult. They have a tough job, the officials do, and we're fortunate in our league to have very good ones. Was it the Lakers-Clippers game you watched? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I watched. And, you know, it, obviously you watch on TV, it yeah. sure looked like a charge. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the, the officials saw it at a different angle, and he might have saw the arm leading that we couldn't see. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but it's, you know, that the, the lane – and I think with the three-point line, hopefully, and I experienced a little bit with FIBA basketball this summer, that nine inches on each yeah. part of the court spreads you out a little more, maybe to open up the lane a little more. I'm sorry, off topic and stuff, but what do you think, I don't know if you heard Kawhi Leonard talk about Rodney being hurt, but being a key piece once he comes back. I don't know if you heard that. Well, yeah, and I've talked to the, the Clippers have been to our practice, and I was with the Clippers guys this summer a couple times with USA Basketball, yeah. and they, they're excited about it. They loved him. They went after him, you know, last year. As mm -hmm. soon as he was let go, they were the team that grabbed him, and um, he's kind of Doc's kind of guy, and they love, just like the Heat, they love how he is, his work ethic, his leadership, and, uh, you know, hopefully, it, you know, one, I'm so happy for him and proud of him to get that contract, and and I know he wants, you know, it'd be great to be on a team that's in the, you know, fighting for the championship, so it would even be a extra special for him. Just purely from a scoring perspective, does, you know, does the expected drop in three-point percentage get made up for by having the wider lane and that kind of thing, in your opinion? Well, one of the things we talked about was look at Toronto in the playoffs last year. They were really good from two. And, and it, you know, it, it kind of – it's totally the analytics, all the stuff they talk about, you can't win without threes and all that stuff. And then they went and won the championship. And and they made threes. Don't get – it. it's that fine mix. And uh, it's something I talked about all summer with USA Basketball, dominate twos. And and we were awful shooting. I mean, we mine a shot 18% as a team, <laughs> and we still won by a big margin. So I think if you if you know if you get the good space and you spread the court, and you got some guys that hold people accountable, yeah, I I hope it does open up the lane and allow you know maybe some easier scoring in the in the paint. Does it does it change your rotations at all? You know, with a longer closeout out to the three point line, or is oh, it so minuscule well, that it doesn't I don't really? Know about that. It, it, you still got to do your. I'm not that smart to figure that out. We'll have to see how it goes. But uh, you still got to. You know, you got to be smart. You got to know who the shooters are. And, uh, and for our guys, I, you know, just talking to coaches today, it's more the bad shooters. That's who it's really going to affect. I think your good shooters are still going to be okay. You know, Curry's. He's fine. They can push it back further, but the, the ones that are bad, there's the guys that are going to probably struggle. What do you get out of a game against Emporia State? Uh, you know, one, it's a it's a dress rehearsal. Play in front of a crowd, get film against a different opponent. Um, we got so many new guys. I think that's important that, uh, you know, they get that chance. And that's why I did two exhibition disc games this year instead of a scrimmage and an exhibition because I thought – they needed to be in front of people and, and playing together and getting ready, especially we're going on the road uh, November 9th and we're at Vegas. So we, we need that live competition in front of people to help us. Coach, looking back on this preseason preparation, what do you think, all the critics aside, preseason polls, what's going to surprise people most about this team? Well, I, I, you know, we talk a lot about uh, in, what we're about as a program, the culture of effort. Uh, we, our our weight coach came up with that, and and we've tried to we've stuck with that, and we take a lot of pride in it. And then Coach Beard talked last year after we beat them that you know we had championship DNA, and and I've used that. I looked up with DNA, and it's self replacing, um, you know, mechanism. And so now can we we got a lot to replace, but can we do it within ourselves? And 
And, you know, I think we had, we have some talented guys that have experience. Um, you know, I, I, hopefully we keep guarding and playing hard. Uh, and then we got to have, you know, somebody, Cartier, Xavier, got to step up like a Culver did last year and become one of the better players in the league. And I think we're capable of that. Um, and we have some young, talented guys that I think will surprise some people. How do, how do they strengthen that DNA? New <clears throat> I, you know they they have they bring a lot of versatility actually uh, you know you you can't replace Dini a four-year guy he's in the NBA he's on a roster um, so he's pretty good you know that and, but uh, both of those uh, young forwards uh, Montavious Murphy and Antonio Gordon both have some talent they can do a lot of things they complement each other Dejuan Gordon is is very very versatile athletic he plays his butt off and then David Sloan gives us a little older player that has some maturity so I think all four will be important weapons for us. Cartier, uh, Xavier, um, McGurl coming back from last year so those are some of the shooters you have the perimeter shooters you can, can you, you can build on that with those three guys. Oh I think so I don't you know and one of the things you know everyone wants to be an NBA player but the thing they've told Xavier be consistent from three you know you you're an elite athlete you're a elite defender now can you be consistent from three and that that'll probably be the key actually again talking to coaches today everyone's talking about the line and in our stats now our turnovers are drastically higher in practice compared to last year but our shooting has been drastically higher so which you know it doesn't to me right now it doesn't make sense but uh, maybe our defense isn't as good maybe I don't know it, it but um, you know Cartier told a couple of the media people because then they asked me he thinks we're going to be a really good shooting team and so far we've shown it but we got to do it in live action. Besides Mac though in the paint you really don't have a whole lot of depth you have some people that played last year. Yeah I mean, I mean Levi Stockard's probably had the best right. summer of anybody he gives you another look and but it is the scary part about the the league you know West Virginia those dudes walk in here and I'm like oh my goodness what are we going to do against them Kansas has big guys and and depth with the big guys uh, Texas has big guys shoot so three, shoot the three is that where that comes yeah or, three, or you, know. you know you got to get them spread out a little bit put some pressure on them but it you know we're going to have to have different lineups and play different ways at times what? Bruce, if I, uh, when somebody, and you may have asked me this before, but when somebody like Xavier Sneeds caliber comes back and then you, obviously when some people think of NBA caliber talent comes back, oh, a lot of expectations are upon you, but it's completely different. You guys are near the bottom. Is it kind of one thing for Xavier to come back and now everybody's like, okay, we still don't think very highly of you, even with a guy like Xavier back? <laughs> I guess and where would we have picked if he wouldn't have been come back? You yeah. couldn't get much lower, I guess. Um, but, you know, I, I – I think people just look at us. There, like a lot of teams, there's a lot of question marks. And and Xavier is a he's a, he's an elite athlete. He's elite defender. Uh, he's got experience. He's he's scored game in big games, Sweet 16 games, you know, Big 12 games on the road. He it, but him, Cartier, Mac, they got to be consistent. McCall scored 29 points here in this in this building against Kansas in a Big 12 tournament. You know, but he hasn't done that again. So. Can he be consistent? That's with all the guys. And we just got to go prove it. And, you know, they, they've worked hard. Um, I think Xavier coming back when you – I thought you were going to ask about – I think there there was – there's a little pressure on him. And I'm just trying to get him to make – you know, enjoy every day. Make the most of it. Work your butt off. You can't worry about where you're going, your destination. you got to worry about today. That will help you get to your destination. Well, and hopefully that'll help. Four years ago, though, you were talking about these when Barry Brown came in as an unknown and uh, Dean Wade, this lanky kid from uh, yeah, St. John. Uh, we thought so we were you, pretty you, good. You, yeah, you thought you were pretty good, but also at the time, though, you didn't know what to expect at the same yeah. token. So it's all well, a process. But that, when those guys, they had to play. Exactly. You know, they, right. I mean, Barry was so tired at the end. Every freshman wants to play. You know, Cam got hurt. I couldn't even take him out. You know, at the end of the year, and and Dean would foul on purpose so he could come out because he didn't want to go against Niang or Ellis or somebody. You know, it just, um, you know. So it, now with our young guys, I think we have enough other weapons with them that they can be brought along a little slower. Now I think it helped those guys to go through it, and the experience is always, 
you know, that's how you grow and learn as a player. And, and you know, all guys want experience, but you know, you gotta you gotta work your way in and earn it. So what that group did was unbelievable. Yeah, that elite eight run, you know, yeah, back then. Big 12 championship. They they did some yeah. really good things. What were your thoughts on Tyrese Halliburton? I I loved him. And you know, the thing that surprised me with his athleticism that he did some things that I never thought he could do. Um, you know, I, I obviously we knew he could shoot. Um, I, he is a great young man. Uh, he was a great leader. Him and Isaac were two of our our best leaders. Um, the older players that were college players. They helped us win the gold because of their maturity, their leadership. They might not have been the most talented guys. We had some really talented guys, but those guys really gave us that leadership. And then if you look at Tyrese's stats, it's phenomenal. I mean, the, 4.8 shots is all he takes. Again. Yeah, and, and 57% from three. He was His assist turnovers was like 50 to four or something. I can't remember, but um, he was he was, he was was really good. And, and I was really, you know, to see him this morning – you know, the smiles, the hugs, the, him and Isaac, it, it, and I think for them it was a great experience. Obviously, it got both of them some really nice exposure and hopefully helped them in their career. Did that exposure help you too, if you notice, on the recruiting trail or just more like, hey, I mean, you just coached all these big-time guys to a gold over in Greece? Yeah, but then the other ones are mad because they didn't play as many minutes or whatever. I don't know. It's just, you know, that's a tough thing with uh, USA basketball. You, It's hard to keep them all happy and – uh, ironically, we got to play against Reggie Perry. Got to play against Kyra Lewis. We got to play against these two guys here, and so a little maybe a little motivation for those guys. But those guys were all the, pretty much the stars of the team, so they should be happy with me. But um, no, it. I think it, you know, Coach Lowry said one. And my assistant said, you know, you got some good clout. You know, and so I, I hopefully it helped a little bit. If Levi and Mac are on the floor together, does Mac stay at the five on offense? No, Mac's the four. Okay. Mac comes out and he can, you know, Mac can shoot some threes. It, he's just got to know when he should shoot them, and um, and that's going to come. Hopefully, it'll come with not experimenting, but realizing when he has an open shot and not an open shot. And then a lot of people have referenced Levi this off season as having a really good. I guess now we're in season, but you yeah, know, work. No, how's, he's how's he been done? Good. He had and he, if, I mean, his April, May, June were really good. And then he got hurt. End of July had to sit for about four or five weeks, but and then he came back slowly. But lately he's 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 done well. I mean he we're very happy. Uh, he he pushes Mac every day, which is which is a good thing. North Dakota State's a tournament team. Uh, what goes into scheduling a team like that and getting your guys ready? Well, for when we scheduled them, they were not doing very well. <laughs> so they they won. If you look at it, they won a bunch at the end and, and won their tournament and got in and. Uh, they have a lot of guys back, so it'll be a tough game for us. And um, you know, it, it that you know, I'm worried about Emporia, but I'm really worried about North Dakota State right now. And and then going to UNLV, it, it's it's it, it'll be some tough games for our guys, but hopefully that challenge will will get them ready and be motivated those early games. See, Bruce, what do you think about the this emphasis now to try to legislate the flopping out of college basketball? I mean, I'm sure you probably think it's a positive for the game. Yeah, I think so. But you better be able to make sure. And, and uh, you know, I think it's almost like um, you better have somebody looking at tape if you're going to do it because some is it a flop, is it not a flop? And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a tough thing. I, I don't like it. I don't like the head bops and all that stuff. But. Uh, they called in in our scrimmage the other day. I, uh, I didn't even know what they called, to be honest. But <laughs> it was, I guess the first one's a warning. And, uh, you know, it, 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 again, that it's – I hope we – it's tough enough to be an official and college basketball. And the more rules you put in, it doesn't make it more difficult. And then the fans get mad when you're going back and looking at replays. You know, it's just more things for more people to complain. I hope, I hope they're doing a smart thing with it. All of your players said that they think it, that you guys will have a smoother transition than others because you guys already play so physical. Do you? Do you yeah, do you I don't think. You know, I we always have guys that flop, but you know, I mean, that's just part of the game. You know, or you think you're taking a charge, and that's the thing. You're like, you, do you fall? You just got a little contact. Now are they going to call it? You know, but it's the the ones where you grab somebody and you know fall down or something, and then the other guy gets a foul. Those are the ones I don't like. I don't think that's part of the game. Uh, you have to reset the clock on that twenty second. You, uh, like that? you know, it it. I thought it would be more of a factor, um, and it, so far it has not been. They want a faster paced game, and 
their whole thing is it takes 10 seconds to get over to half court. You got 10 to get it over. Yeah. Now you have 20 seconds. And so you get the rebound, you know, get going. Uh, you know, we, we, we actually have been practicing. I'll just throw the ball to somebody and say, 20 seconds, you got to go. Random offense uh, so that they can. And we did it this summer with USA Basketball. Help me have a little better feel of it because you got to be aware of it. Last week, it seemed like you talked, it seemed like Dejuan might have been the best in practice so far. But after, I mean, another week of practice, who, who's who been the best so far leading up to this? Oh, I, you know, I thought um, when you're talking about the new guys or, I mean, Car- Xavier, Xavier's, yeah. I thought, has had a real good week. He's been consistent. I think he's finally relaxing, playing. I, you know, Cartier obviously had the, a really good scrimmage. Um, he's starting to get it figure out they're all trying to figure out their roles but Dejan's been consistent and I've been happy with it the two freshmen Monte and Antonio have been very solid Uh, Levi's been good we need Matt going he didn't get much done in that scrimmage and he's you know he is our big guy with experience so Mm -hmm. we need him to play well David Sloan's starting to figure it out a little bit Um, so you know it it's it's some of it's every, you know, which day. You talk to me yeah. one day, yep. I'll say this guy the next day, and that's part of the early practices. Now we got to get some consistency. How often do you think you see two point guards playing at one time in this team? Oh, I, I think we can definitely see it. I mean, every day I rotate um, Cardi, David, and Sean, and, you know, there's two together or the other two in, uh, in practice. So I think it, it makes Cardi, you know, because he – if you remember back freshman year, he was 40-something from three. And and it wasn't quite as good last year. I thought he got on a good run in that middle. Uh, but that allows him to be off the ball and maybe shoot use his shooting ability. And then when we need somebody to make plays, obviously he's he's probably our best playmaker with the ball. And the last thing I have is uh, on the scrimmage, it didn't seem like uh, Nigel or James played at all. I was they just wondering hurt. about yeah. They were hurt. And, uh, you know, both of them are out for a little bit here. And, um, you know, it, it's sad for both of them because they have been hurt before. And, um, you know, it, and, and it puts us in a bind for big guys and practice. So, um, you know, I, I just I just get frustrated, to be honest. I called Luke, our trainer, this morning in between just to check in every day because, um, you know, we, we got to have enough guys to practice and you want to have enough bodies when games started. You probably want all 13 scholarship guys to be great rotation pieces, but in a realistic sense, maybe not even this team. How many? How deep would you like to go? What's an ideal number? I mean, number? It, I think if you have a nine with a tenth, it's really tough to keep 11, 12, 13 happy. Um, you know that. You know, and and I've always said if you can have 12 on scholarship, give the 13th to your a walk on that earns it. Um, you know, and then maybe have a guy redshirt in that 11, 12. It's probably. Otherwise, somebody, in this day and age, somebody's going to be unhappy, and that's why there's, it's the way society is today, instant success, and why we had nearly 1,000 kids transfer in college basketball. Coach Cardio talked about playing Fortnite with uh, Barry and Dean still in, in, in the contact. Uh, how, talk about the family atmosphere that these guys, obviously when you talk to them, it's, it's I, more than a slogan. Yeah, it, it, and I heard Cardi, somebody asked him questions this morning, what's the best thing he said? my teammates and how we are family and and i really believe it's true and i i got to kent state everyone talked about it but the every school you go to ah oh, you know nation this but there is something special at k-state and the togetherness and and I, I think we have it with our program our guys really enjoy each other they have fun with each other uh, hopefully we promote that within and and it's more than just being a basketball player it's 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 being a true student athlete and a person and uh, but they, I, I'm surprised because we do have new guys, and it really seems like those they've embraced them, they brought them in, um, and they're all enjoying each other, which is important to have success.